Now. Hey everyone, welcome to this video on the call stack. My name is Colt, and first I just want to apologize for this recording setup. I'm still working on it. <laughs> this microphone is way too big, so I'm working on something better. Uh, but for now, we're just going to work with it. So the call stack is something that, in my experience, a lot of students aren't really comfortable with. They know that it exists as this like amorphous blob that they just don't want to dive into. They know it's a thing, but they don't really understand how it works and why they should care. So let's start there. Why does it matter? First, it's fundamental to how JS works. It's always good to understand the language you're working with, right? It's, it's, it's a good thing to know what's happening behind the scenes. But second, and I think this is most important, it's really helpful when you're debugging your code. So JavaScript, I mean, Chrome and Firefox and pretty much every browser this, uh, today has built in call stack debugging tools. So you can see what's happening at any point with the call stack. And I'm going to show those in this video. And then finally, it does come up in interviews. So absolutely worth knowing for that. Let's start with a really important question, which is what is the call stack? I like to think of it as sort of like a to-do list of function invocations. So if you have an application, you call a function and the, the last line of that app, that function call might result in five other function calls. And each of those might have cascading function calls and they might be waiting on results of future calls to come back until our final original function call finishes. So JavaScript can basically only do one thing at a time. It's mainly single threaded. Technically, uh, there's something called thread pooling that happens, but we're gonna just ignore that. Just assume that one thing is happening at any given time. So JavaScript needs to keep track of the history of things, sort of a list of what is waiting to be returned, which functions have been invoked but aren't done yet. So that's what the call stack is. It's a structure that stores it. So it's like a to-do list. And the reason it's called a stack, by the way, that's a, a common data structure. And the way that a stack works is that it's a last in first out structure. So I like to think of it as like a pile of books. I have a pile of books over here. You might be wondering what I was doing with that. If I want to add a book to a stack, I add it to the top, right? I'm not gonna try and add it to the bottom and like shift everything over. Uh, I'm gonna add it to the top, just like this. And then if I wanna remove something from a stack, I take it off the top. So the first thing that was in, or sorry, the last thing that was in this red book is the first thing out. I don't remove from the bottom. That would cause a book avalanche. All right, that's enough of the books. Push those out of the way. So in a similar way, here's a little visualization of some function invocations. Don't worry about what the text says, but we have a function called main and our call stack takes note of that. But it actually calls multiply. And our function multiply, for some reason, calls another function called something. So these are all added to the stack. So this was the last thing, it was added to the top. So it's the first thing to come off. Here we go, it's popped off, then multiply, and then finally main is finished. Last in, first out. So to summarize that, when you invoke a function, the details of the function call, the invocation, are saved to the top of the stack. They are pushed to the top of the stack. And then when that function returns, or whenever any function returns, the information about the invocation is taken off the top of the stack. It's popped off, taking the book off. So here's a simple example. We have a function called multiply, and then it's being called down here on line five. So the way that the stack works, what's the very first function that's invoked in this application, or I shouldn't call it an app, in this code, there's something called the main function. Think of it as like the most basic uh, top level function call in every single JavaScript file. So main is added to our stack. And it says line five is where we invoked the first function. This is not a function invocation, it's a declaration. So nothing added to the stack. But then in the main function, we're calling multiply. Multiply three comma five. So that means we need to add a frame, is what it's called, a stack frame, we'll come back to that, to the top of our stack. And so now we have multiply and also the line number two. That's it though, because in multiply, the only line is a return. So remember when we return something, we pop it off the stack. Here we go, there we go, just popped it off. And now our main function is done. There's no code after it, so it's done and our stack is empty. So we'll do a more complex example in a moment. Let's come back to stack frames. So this is a visualization of what a stack frame is. It contains some information about that function invocation. It contains the function that was invoked, the name of it, like multiply, 
the parameters that were passed in and the current line number. And I'll actually show you this in Chrome in the debugger where we can look at a call stack in just a moment. All right, so I'm in the Chrome debugging tools and I have uh, a little snippet I've created with some code. And over here in the debugger, there's a little section. I'm gonna close everything except for call stack, which currently shows nothing. I need to pause my code, I need to add a breakpoint, and we'll start, start to be able to explore the call stack. So this code is really simple. I have a function called first thing and another one called second thing and I'm calling second thing first, and that returns first thing plus the string second thing. So if I call it, if I just run it on its own, I'm gonna use, it's a snippet so I can do command to return, and I get first thing, second thing. But now let's see how that actually happens. So I'm gonna add a breakpoint right here, and now I'm going to run the code. Command enter, or I could click that button. Okay, so we have our main function in this case, the way they display it is anonymous. And the very first thing that needs to happen, I'm gonna step through, second thing is called. And you can see that it's added to the stack at the beginning. And you can see the, the line numbers, by the way. So the first anonymous main function was line nine. On line six, we had second thing. Now second thing doesn't return right away. It needs to call first thing first, <laughs> first thing first. Uh, and that happens if I step through it. You can see it's added. First thing is right here. Now first thing is at the top and it returns the string first thing. So what that means is it's going to be popped off because when we return something, the top value or the top frame of the stack is removed. So watch it right here. Oh, one more time, there we go. Now it's removed. So now we're back at second thing, and this arrow indicates what's actually being executed. So we have the value of first thing, which we called, it was returned to us. So now we just add that with second thing, and we return that, that string, and you'll see this gets popped off. And then finally, one more time, we're done. And you can see first thing, second thing appears as our return value. So I have another little bit of code. I just changed it a tiny bit. First thing now calls second thing. Second thing now calls first thing. So you can probably imagine what's gonna happen if I execute this code. We get an error, but what is that error exactly? Here we go, maximum call stack size exceeded. So what this tells us is that we exceeded the number of frames that Chrome allows us to have in the call stack because nothing was ever being returned. We're just constantly adding books and books on top of this stack over and over and over or adding frames on top of this stack and nothing was being popped off. And in Chrome, I think the, the maximum call stack size is 16,000 frames. So this happened 16,000 times and then it gave up and threw this error. Maximum call stack size exceeded. So this is a, sometimes this is a common error, especially uh, when we talk about recursion, which I have a video on that as well. We'll see what causes this. Uh, otherwise, it's probably not that common to have you know a function calling one function and having the same one calling the first one. But with recursion, you have a function calling itself, and you can run into this very very easily. So to summarize everything, to wrap up, a stack, the call stack, is just an ordered set of stack frames. Just a bunch of, it's a to-do list for function calls or invocations. So the bottom of the stack is the first function invoked. So let's say, let me go back to our books. This is the first function that was invoked. Then the next one that's invoked gets added on top and added on top until finally something returns a value. All right, we return this value. So it's the last in, first out. This is the last thing in now, it's the first thing out. And we keep going until the, the last frame, the last function invocation returns some value. So it's processed from top to bottom. And on that note, I think that's pretty much it. That's all I have to say. So goodbye. Thanks for watching. I'll pop out from under the mic. Uh, like, subscribe, comment, whatever. What am I supposed to say? Just do whatever you want. <laughs> but there's buttons you can click if you want to see more. All right. Goodbye. Meow.